This lesson is on summer fig cuttings and rooting tips. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and authors, saving the world with the home garden. So this lesson is inspired by Evan in Burlingame, California, and he wrote in his most recent order to us, love your YouTube channel. My grandma is 101 and her name is Hilda. I would love to get a cutting of the Hilda fig to grow and please let me know, thanks. And I wanna make sure that Hilda has a chance to hopefully get one of these cuttings off of this Hilda honey green fig that I've been enjoying since I was about five years of age in Orange County, California. I've made it a point since I was a child to make sure that a piece of that Hilda honey green fig followed me to every house I've ever lived in from that home in Orange County, California to my home in Palm Beach, Florida, and then back now to my home here in Los Angeles and about a total of five homes in between. I've always made sure I took a cutting so I can always enjoy that exact genetically identical flavored fig that I enjoyed since the age of five. And now here it is growing behind me. We just did a YouTube lesson on that about a week or two ago, which inspired this particular order. And I wanna share with you that we do an annual free fig cutting giveaway every February 1st. And that is my favorite time for collecting fig cuttings. And we collect them from gardens all over the country. In 2021 of February, we donated close to a thousand fig cuttings from gardens throughout predominantly California, but also other states that have contributed. And be sure to be on the lookout for that notice. But I do wanna make sure that Hilda, Grandma Hilda gets a piece of our fig cutting. I'm gonna show you how you can propagate figs even in the summer heat, which I know a lot of you think, oh, I can only do it at specific times of the year. But this lesson is specifically about giving you the tips to successfully propagate figs in the summer. Let's get started. Tip number one when preparing your fig cuttings is to make sure you're selecting the hardy wood, the wood that's hardened over the last few months and not that growth that's happened within the last month, as you can see here, evidenced by all of this green stem. What we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the green stem back until we see it begin to harden, as we see here where it's starting to turn brown. All of this green and green brown stem, I'm simply going to cut off and I'm making a straight cut, notice, as this is gonna be the top of the cutting. And there comes the saps. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to now create a cutting that is about six to eight inches. And the goal is to result in at least three nodes, two nodes, and the nodes are defined by wherever there was a leaf. And you can take a look at this as being, here's the leaf node right in there. There's actually two buds. If you can capture this on this side over here, you can see there's two buds in the node. One is probably gonna result in shoot growth, which is gonna be a branch. And another right behind it is probably gonna be a fig. As you can see, the figs are developing at every single leaf node below. And even though there's no leaf over here, for whatever reason, it fell off. You can see there is a node there and every node is categorized by another fig. And so the goal is again, to have a minimum of three nodes, but I'm cutting a segment that's about eight to 12 inches long. You can see you got a lot of nodes here. And what we're doing now at the end is we're gonna remove all of these figs. And my point with the end is I wanna make sure that I'm not cutting a straight cut as we did here on the top. I'm leaving these leaves on for a second so you can quickly identify the top and the bottom. But on the top, we cut it straight. The goal is to um, minimize transpiration and loss of moisture from the cutting. But on the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to cut out a diagonal like so. And this is gonna help increase the absorption of water and also help stimulate root development. We're gonna remove the fig. We're gonna remove some leaves. And where that diagonal cut took place, we are now going to also score the bottom to further increase in moisture absorption as well as stimulate root development. So as you can see, this cutting that we prepared for Evan's grandma, Hilda, you can see that this here is the bottom. We've got node number one, node number two, three, four, and five. And if these figs end up developing, you're gonna wanna make sure you take them off. You can wait for them to develop some and then remove them. But as they begin to develop, it's important that you also remove them so that the growth goes towards root development and shoot development not for fruit development in that first year. What we're now gonna do is add a rooting powder. And what the rooting powder is going to do is obviously aside from stimulate root development, it's also gonna inhibit 
mold and mildew at the cutting. Instead of using a rooting powder, a lot of people also use honey and cinnamon as natural sources for prohibiting and inhibiting the development of mildew and mold at that cutting end. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the cutting in a slightly damp paper towel and wrap it. And Evan, when you get the cutting, I want you to follow the steps below this video where I share my two plastic cup method where you put perlite vermiculite 50-50 mix in one cup with holes at the bottom. And then you basically put your cup with the holes on top of another cup, which is gonna contain the moisture and just keep the water level down near the bottom in the bottom five, 10% to help keep that soil medium moist and help encourage root development into this container. And within about three to six weeks, you're gonna have a rooted cutting where you can then take that cutting and upgrade into a pot or integrate into your home orchard. And I wish you the best of luck and I hope Grandma Hilda gets to enjoy figs in the upcoming year or two. My mom, Hilda, moved into a new home about two years ago and unfortunately doesn't have yet one of her own Hilda honey green figs. And I'm gonna make sure to also propagate one for her using an entirely different method. For those of you watching, make sure you subscribe and hit that push bell notification and stay informed of when in fact this is actually going to root, which I expect within the upcoming month or two. And I want you guys to watch and see how this particular cutting is gonna grow here on our property using the second method and let's get started. So here we are with this Y-shaped branch here in the garden and i'm actually going to remove the leaves you'll see why in a second but i really want you to see this y branch that i pruned because it was growing into our courtyard area in this direction so i took them down you can see that they're quickly creating at the leaf nodes new buds which will eventually create new branches on the tree and so what we're going to do is take this wishbone structure and if you have a structure or access to a fig tree where it's got at least two branches or more three four five branches what we're going to do is create this wishbone structure into the root system of our future fig tree using this really cool method i'm going to demonstrate right now so we're taking the wishbone and creating a wishbone by pruning it right here and you can see with all the cuts we're doing them about a quarter of an inch away from the nodes of each of the trees what is the bottom will with this new planting method become the top this is going to be the top of the tree and these are going to become the roots and let me show you how follow me so as we did with the little cutting what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we score the ends where the nodes are to increase with moisture absorption and root development. We're doing the same thing down here as well. And now we're going to add some more rooting powder to the ends. So the reason we put it in a container is again, we're gonna be moving this established fig tree once it gets established in the upcoming about six to eight weeks from my home garden to my mom Hilda's home garden. And so here we've got the Y-shaped structure in the container. You can take a look. I've already got some potting soil established down below. I've got the container a couple of inches into the topsoil in the garden so that that'll help also with keeping the container moisture stable. And now we're just going to continue filling it up with more potting soil. And hopefully together we're going to get to see this and enjoy this together in the years to come. So the next thing we're gonna do is whitewash the tree and we're gonna be using the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard Protection from Damaging Summer Sunburn, Insects, and Rodents. And we've demonstrated dozens of times here on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel, instances of first, second, and third degree burns on figs, on citrus trees, as well as the Prunus family trees, which are your plums and your apricots and peaches and nectarines and so forth. As you can see here with this particular pluary behind me from Dave Wilson Nursery, this here is the sweet treat pluary. And again, we've protected the underlying tree trunk and branches to prevent the risk of, again, for a second and third degree burns. This particular fig that we just did a cutting of, and here we are mid-August with temperatures in the 90s and approaching 100 with 14 hours of daylight, which is maximum light, as here we are in the summer months. And 
this tree doesn't have a canopy protecting those underlying tree trunks and branches. And so what we're gonna do is whitewash it. And instead of color white, which was the original color, which naturally reflects the most amount of light and heat, there's also natural colors and options with Ivory Organics being brown and green. And then as of 2021, there's the option of doing gray. And today we're using color grayish. Check this out. For best results, ideally, where this bifurcation, the splittings happening between the branches should all be under the ground as that's gonna further increase root development below the ground and supporting a smaller structure that's above the ground. Once the plant begins to grow, we're then gonna start fertilizing the plant with the Ivory Organics all-purpose fertilizers, which offer your plants all six macronutrients, not just the NPK that you'll find in most of the fertilizers out there, but this has the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium, as well as magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. All the macronutrients, the nutrients that the plants need in abundance in the soil for optimal performance, longevity, and maximum free yields. If you've enjoyed this lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us that thumbs up and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the push bell notification to stay connected as soon as the next educational lesson is shared. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.